Hi everyone, I'm Thais, and on this channel I turn you into an RPG master. So if that's something you're interested in, smash the subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and keep in touch. You might want to also join my Discord to be able to do that. So here's the thing on uh, on X, I found today or in the last few days those articles here claiming there are some leaks for Diablo 4 Season 5 uh, changes, right? Nothing official from Blizzard yet, some uh, creators got offered this uh, information, but until we see actually the patch notes from Blizzard, I would consider this to be some stupid lazy piece. Anyway, so let's see what this is about, it's two articles that I found so far, and we're gonna focus on the hardcore necromancer perspective here. Let's see. First thing we notice on the first article is crowd control is reduced, that they already mentioned, that at least we already know. Legendary drop rates from monsters above level 100 are increased, so that's pretty good for hell type mind cages and all that, because they're gonna be back in the game. Alright, let's see what else. Frost burn not very useful for our necromancer, even the shadow builds, because come on, like freeze you want to deprive yourself of corpses uh, i don't know might be good for terror you know but it is what it is it also now has fire damage resistance which is kind of weird right uh, okay flicker step it also has what lightning resistance um okay fists of fate at least now has some useful stat and chance to apply a random crowd control effect for two seconds that's not so bad but at the same time might not be so good for the boss tiger bars we'll see how the change actually changes things but the, those three things that we see here attack speed critical strike chance this is pretty much valid for any build and especially if you want to scale dot builds which is kind of unreasonable I would like to see some other things to scale dots, for example, more damage to healthy, more damage to injured, and things would actually make sense for dots, and not having us also rely on crits for dot builds, because th let, let's be honest here, that just that's just stupid and bad design, at least to me. Feel free to disagree, up to you, right? Profine mind, mind cage, like I said, it stays in the game and it can now stack up to three times. Unfortunately, just up to three times, but hey, at least it can finally stack. So if you can zoom a couple of those, it will be you're probably gonna be better rewarded. So that's something I'm particularly looking forward to. Let's see the end game changes here that they share. Tortured gifts of mysteries costs um, open and reduced from 100 to. 75 in world tier 1 and 2. I have no idea why this is in end game changes here. Probably some noob wrote it, but uh, you know, I'm usually like that. Uh, so let's move on here. Infernal Hordes. This was what I can tell is it was terrible because it was very slow and very unrewarding, but let's see, Tortured Gift of Mysteries, Tortured Gift of Living Steel, and the Doomsayer's Loot um, Explosion now have 100% chance to drop Infernal Compasses. But that's like uh, Helltide stuff, right? Why? Uh, never mind. Whisper Caches now have a 75% chance to drop an Infernal Compass, which is somewhat good. Especially having in mind they um, kind of changed the density of Whispers on the Helltide. And it might happen that those rotating Whispers, which are not from the one zone that they got stuck into, you can also do them in like another region if they happen to be there. So that's pretty good. Yeah, Inferno Compass tier 4 to 8 can now drop from higher tier activities, but they don't necessarily state what those activities are. Let's see. Inferno Compasses can now be crafted, which is pretty decent. That's um, a really good thing, especially having in mind, like, when you do, um, when you level all your glyphs, 
You probably don't use any of the sigil powder and it just stacks there by the hundreds of thousands probably, right? Same goes here. You probably during season 4 you have like tens if not hundreds of thousands of forgotten souls, right? So that would be a really good uh, way to waste them. Hopefully it's not waste them, but we'll see. Guaranteed Inferno Compass drop from the new questline now matches the world tier the player is on when completing it. That sounds pretty decent to me. Okay, let's see. Increase the pace of events spawning at higher tiers. Right, that, that sounds really good. So, if we do higher tiers of this, they might be faster. So, totally looking forward. Fixed an issue where multiplayer wasn't scaling the monster health in Infernal Horks. Well, yeah, sounds about right. The council boss fight at the end of Infernal Horks now awards Burning Aether. I believe they should do more changes like give us more Aether and um, make the Aether actually persist during runs so we can uh, keep opening and opening and opening. Like, what if we don't get enough and want to save it for to like open something else, not force us to waste it, so to say? Just like the painful hearts, they persist during hell tides across hell tides, right? That would be pretty good if they do that. I'm gonna skip the barbarian here, and I hope they just nerfed it to the ground and the druid. Hope it's better. We don't really care. Let's see this now. The necromancer skills. It's uh, more lucky hit across the board, so maybe they finally realize uh, how much it depends on it, especially now that the ones will not provide lucky hit and they will provide vulnerable damage instead. So they are kind of nearly doubled is in some uh, places and maybe that's how they want to make up for it, right? Because um, it's really dangerous to actually play with the focus on hardcore especially, let's say after tier 70 or 80 on the pit. So that would totally make sense, right? Let's see what else. Aspects, aspect of the bur bursting bones, which probably not many of you use, me included, but now it scales, scales with the path of Tragu, which is kind of weird because boots without uh, uh, movement speed and metamorphosis, especially on hardcore, those are pretty much trash boots, right? Maybe they could work with bone spirit if you are noob enough to play it with blood mist, but totally not my thing if you get the idea. Let's see here. Uh, inexorable Reaper's aspect, they decrease the cooldown. Cooldown is reduced to... Uh, way less. Well, the problem is that now we can only get cooldown, I think, uh, on the amulet or on the focus. So, focus is out of the option. Also, if you want to get good mobility and good resource management, it's out of the question to also have it on the amulet. So, that's a really good change. Size definitely approves. I definitely want to try a build like um, uh, something similar to what I did in, uh, I think it was season 1 with the Curse Auras because it's a close combat build, it's a melee build mostly but now with this mobility thing it might be a thing, we'll see because uh, the problem with this that I'm having is uh, like we do not have weapon swaps so when we want to use Sever as a mobility skill to use the weapon uh, which we have to like provide this aspect although it's not an offensive aspect right it's a mobility aspect it can go on the boots on, on, on the amulet but not on a weapon so it's kind of weird but if we had this imagine uh, being able to swap between this and other offensive aspect like uh, use this to move and when you don't need to move actually swap weapon and use it offensively like for a close combat not to move along because how much damage you gonna do with Sever these days? 10 million at most, maybe, if you're lucky. If you have like the top gear, I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, let's see the uniques here. The Blood Artisan is uh, actually changed. Now we see it only requires uh, up to 3 Blood Orbs to cast a free Bone Spirit. 
Now, my problem with this armor is that it's somewhat better only on Bloodlands with gore kills. Why? Because now the Blood Orbs mechanic, you know, uh, gore kills when, when it consumes them, it's actually you can shoot through them to consume them. You no longer just have to walk through them to count them as consumed. So that's kind of a new tech that we have for blood builds here and it might make it a bit more viable although we're probably going to be able to get a better legendary here for for the sake of the aspect right or um especially if we do a bone spirit build so we'll see how this goes all right how from below now provides a plus two corpse explosion is it okay i still don't think that uh, the corpse explosion necromancer could be a viable viable build at the most difficult things especially while not having a legendary glove because we'll be losing a lot of power there so. anyway let's see what else do we have lidless wall looks like they actually finally made this somewhat uh, usable shield because of the armor now that it will provide right total armor armor uh, bone storm duration cooldown reduction plus to bone skills so probably many of the bone builds will hunt this down especially with greater affixes because it's uh, insane now well my only problem with this is they're trying to make it more bone spirit viable while before it was more bone spear viable so to say because now actually if we use this shield we don't have to worry about the armor right we don't have to worry about tampering total armor but we are losing a lot of health we are losing a lot of attack speed we are losing far more important things so we'll see how this plays i'm generally not really impressed especially having in mind how important lidless wall was in the previous diablo games well it wasn't so we are getting getting there in this one too looks like all right let's see tamper manuals blood damage is increased this definitely had to be done because uh blood search is very weak also the hemorrhage could be very weak if you want to play basic skill maybe with this new sword right uh, blood overpower damage is increased that's pretty good because uh, it scales pretty well with crit so we'll see how this does and damage while fortified which is actually really easy to get uh, done uh, to be fortified with the necromancer no matter the build is also increased but we'll see if this will make up for it uh, shadow shadow finesse let's see shadow damage over time is increased okay but not with much just up to 15 and darkness damage is increased now i just hope you understand the difference here be between those two because some of the damage dealt by the shadow builds is not by shadow skills right because for example uh, shadow blight is not a skill it's a passive so this darkness damage not really helpful right or we'll see how this goes okay the rest is here the other classes which i personally don't really care about so let's move on to the other article here Adjusted main start scaling to make up for the additional item slots that barbarian and rogues have yeah dream on necromancers and sorks now receive one percent damage per eight intelligence used to be one percent damage per ten intelligence well let me tell you how much this helps imagine you have this um uh what's it great arapix uh, item right and you have 150 intelligence right how much does it scale it used to be it, it used to be let's say 160 for the ease right of of math it let's say you have 160 60 intelligence on a ring right and it's gonna be what it's gonna be 20 damage that's like the mean row of the damage affix so that's pretty pointless to me i believe they 
still have no idea what they're doing but we'll see how this goes right eventually they might uh, they might kind of make up for it let's say i remember the maximum row of the the maximum row of the damage affix is i believe 63.8 or something it was above 60 for sure so unless we need this intelligence to kind of add up somewhere else i don't know i don't see this making up for the barbarians having uh, like four weapon slots what will make up for it is maybe if they give us like four ring slots or something just kind of gonna equalize the things like um I don't know, maybe one more amulet and three rings instead? It's just bullshit. Okay, never mind. Druids and rogues, we don't care what they do here on this channel mostly because, you know, experience bonus per monster level difference is now uncapped. Used to be capped at 15%. So, if you are um, if you are someone like me who is uh, rushing through leveling, and um, rushing through the world tiers that's gonna be probably that's probably gonna be way more rewarding now so we'll see how that goes right something like level 30 35 do the, the the capstone then on level 50 do the other capstone then go to world tier 4 we're probably gonna level up way way faster now let's see okay uniques this one is uh, already was already mentioned all right this one too this one too fist of fate la 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 okay so as you can see the different articles mention different changes so i wouldn't really count on those but uh, just to make fun with what's going on here i decided to do this video right Temper manuals, damage to close enemies is reduced, which is uh, really sad, unfortunately. For fun, mind cage and the added to the game permanently, but they don't even mention here that uh, it can stack up to three times. Enchanting no longer will cost angel bread, which we don't really care about because it's really, really easy to get when you do a bunch of health tides, right? End game changes, the pit here, right? The stacking debuff that increases damage taken after getting hit by the pit boss abilities is going to remain right that's the tormented debuff right so hardcore folks beware i guess okay hell tight readjusted for hard drop rate whatever that means they, they are always so specific you have to guess what they mean and it can mean like 500 times things right readjusted does that mean like um the drop rates will be lower compared to season 5 higher compared to the ptr probably even god doesn't know right Blood Maiden now only requires two Baneful Hearts to be summoned in the World Tier 1 and 2. That's actually pretty good. Okay, let's see what else. Infernal Horde significantly increased the rewards from Infernal Hordes. Spoiler, I suppose, or greater equipment chest cost to open reduced from 250 to 60, which is kind of more viable now, right? Spoils of equipment from 25 to 20, spoils of materials from 25 to 20. They don't say if those actually provide better materials or actually any useful ones because you probably don't want to do this event for like one hour and get something you can get in less than a minute during the hell tide. So what I'm probably gonna do is maybe just run a bunch of those to see if they are wasting my time too much with some like multi-target build. Gonna probably struggle on the boss but we'll see how this goes. Eh? But if it's a waste of time, I'm just probably gonna spend like 10 hours a day on Helltide and bossing and stuff like that. Timer per wave is reduced, which is pretty good, but it's still too long, I think. Increased amount of monsters per wave, so that means we definitely need a really, 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 really strong multi-target build, like Blood Surge and all the damage you can get everywhere. I think I, I read somewhere that they buffed the Paragon boards, like um, 
blood begets blood right and blood bath they are kind of doubled or something so that shouldn't be a problem because they scale multiplicatively and that's pretty good increased amount of monsters okay double all the burning ether drops they should at least quadruple it i believe pets can now pick up burning ether i hope they also make them burn uh, not burn but pick up potions right especially for those boss fights and all that that's gonna be pretty decent pretty good maybe they will do that maybe not probably not it's too good of a quality of life right boss health on the ptr was bugged and was therefore decreased yeah but uh, it was bugged to the point where you could simply go die to the boss and then you go to kill the boss again it was with uh, regular health well not very hardcore friendly isn't it well but i'm glad they fixed it because it was using maybe the old values from the old pit when it was like uh, too hard let's say pit 70 is now like uh, pit 110 something like this okay we're moving on here the new tiers 9 and 10 are coming to the mid-season patch um i don't know i'm not really generally very impressed with this because most of the builds are not that strong i've seen many people complain on the forums or in comments and stuff like that that they even have problems completing season 4 which i already did and that's why i'm actually not playing in the last two weeks or so because i don't really have much to do i made like so many builds and videos about them i completed the season killed the bosses farmed everything so why bother right i want to get back to it let me know in the comments if you want to see me play more anyway let's see skipping this hope they nerfed it they nerfed it did they nerf it okay damage reduced damage okay they nerfed it that's pretty good anyway no need to check anything else on this guy drew it drew it Paragon. Let's see. Necromancer. Lucky hit chance. The most skills is increased. But yeah. Very specific. Example. Sever. Blah blah blah. Explosion can now trigger lucky hit effects on the decompose uh, skill. Okay. Aspects. Right. We already mentioned this. Mentioned it. Paragon. Okay. Overpower damage on Bloodbath is increased from 35% to 70 and it's multiplicative so that's pretty good for those with blood builds like blood surge and maybe somewhat blood lance i haven't seen it do like more than 50 million damage or something so definitely looking forward to that but my problem is with lance is it's supposed to be played with a focus so it's kind of a fragile build we'll see how this goes Blood begets blood, okay, damage of the blood orbs is increased, that's pretty good, and damage cap is increased from 30 to 50, okay. That might make it somewhat better, but we'll see how this goes, okay. Temper manuals, blood damage, blood damage, okay, already talked about this, and also shadow finesse, okay. Uh, some other classes, other classes, and I guess that's it, folks, so, I hope it, this was... Um, somewhat funny and interesting those are the things that i managed to to find if you haven't seen them already so hope you enjoyed those comments you can let me know what you think about those alleged uh, like those changes that are supposed to be uh, coming like allegedly or whatever you want to call it to the game but remember this until we see the final patch notes i wouldn't really trust any of this honestly we'll see how it goes and how it plays yeah not much more to add here again let me know what you think in the comments and thank you guys for watching i'll see you on the next one peace out take care